Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be instant dates, future dates, and phone numbers. What we're going to talk about today, I've got one email from a viewer that I'm going to go through, and he brings up some really good points. So I'm going to talk about making an instant date, meaning like when you meet somebody that you really like, your date starts right then and there on the spot. Now, obviously, that's not always you're not always going to be able to do that. And I'm also going to talk about future dates, meaning making a date right on the spot. And then obviously the third is meaning getting a phone number so you can later get, get in touch with that girl to make a date, obviously, at some point in the future. The most confident way that you're going to come across, obviously, is asking for a date on the spot, or even which is the best one of all, which is when you meet somebody and you have that chemistry, say you're at a social event or a party, your date starts right then and there on the spot. You just start hanging out, having fun together, and ultimately at some point later on in the evening, you end up hooking up. And I'll go through some examples from my own life to kind of take you through the process, to teach you the mindset and what to say and those kinds of things. So before we get into the email, I have a quote that I wrote that I want to share with you. And it says, women want to be in a love story that happens or starts unexpectedly and evolves slowly over time. If you meet a woman in a public place, bar, social event, party, etc., and you both are available, invite her to join you so your love story can start with an instant, exciting, and unexpected date. If you or she is not available to have an instant date, then make a definite date on the spot to meet up for a drink or dinner sometime in the future that is convenient for you both. If you are in a rush or a little timid and shy, asking for a phone number to call her later for a date will often work, but will not yield as many successful seductions as an instant date or making a date on the spot. The more bold and confident you appear the moment you meet, dramatically increases your chances of a successful seduction. The more steps you put in between your initial meeting and scheduling your first date, the greater the chance will be that your initial encounter will not lead to a successful seduction. Obviously the least desirable and obviously the way that makes you come off not as confident as making a date on the spot or having an instant date is obviously getting a phone number to call her later. But obviously if you're just learning this stuff, you're a little timid, you're a little shy, it can be hard. The key is going to be is if a woman has really high attraction for you, if she's a high level of attraction you'll do fine but women that are like borderline or like they're not really into you or they're not really feeling that comfortable with you it's going to be very hard or harder to convert those to successful dates that's why if you meet somebody and you're at a party or a social event things are going to go really well for you so let me give you an example that i had recently I was at a, an office that I frequent. I'm not going to go into extensive detail because women I date, they watch these videos. And so I don't want to blab or talk about two things and end up cock blocking myself while I'm trying to, to teach you guys things. So I'm going to give you just enough to give you the gist of the story. So I met, I met this girl. I'd seen her once or twice and she knew my name and I, I was kind of intrigued by her. And, and so I ran into her, like I said, one or two times. And then as I was leaving this office, I ran into her in the parking lot. And it was cool out. I had my windows down. I had the top back, you know, in my car. It was nice and, like I said, it was it was cool. It was a nice sunny day. And I was actually headed to lunch. Now, before we go, wait a minute, you said never go to lunch. It was like, I want you to nurse. Just let me go with the story a little bit. This was this was actually during the week. And I didn't have any phone sessions scheduled. And I thought, hey, you know what? Why not? So I see this girl. I was like, hey, I'm gonna go. I'm headed to grab some sushi if you care to join me. And she's like, sure. So she hopped in her car and followed me to the sushi place. And I really didn't know anything about her. And I had the time, so I was figuring, hey, fuck, let's go to lunch. I, I, what I did know is that she also was in the same line of work as me. So I figured, hey, what the hell? I said, if, so I just said, if you care to join me. And so I was already going to lunch. I was like, hey, if you care to join me. And so we went. We had a great lunch. We ended up sitting there for about two hours. She did, I think, probably most of the talking. And it's just our goals, our values were totally aligned because we basically do the same kind of coaching. And so afterwards, I had to go, I had appointments to look at some properties because I'm looking to move where I'm living at, I'm looking to move to a bigger place. And after we finished lunch, I was like, hey, I'm going to be going to look at some places if you care to come along. She's like, sure. And we were having such a great time. 
that she just came along with me. And so we spent like all afternoon what you know going and checking out these places and so like around five or six o'clock she's like hey i'm kind of hungry how about you and i was like yeah i could eat and so we ended up where actually we were we were looking where we were looking at places i literally walked down the street to another condo and met the realtor there and then he drove me around a bunch of other places that were available and she came along with me and so as we're walking back to my place after we had looked at the last one and i decided where which place i wanted to make an offer on the discussion about getting something to eat. Now, obviously, it's like around five or six o'clock, and so, like I said, it's turning like an all-day type of date. I mean, I had work to do and stuff to do, but it wasn't like critical stuff, so I could basically blow it off till the next day because we were just having a great time together. And this is how a love story starts. It's like an unexpected meeting. It was like, hey, do you care to join me? And so, basically, we get back to my place, and we got we got some drinks and some things, and we ordered some food. And we just kind of hung out and just started watching movies and stuff. And things just kind of slowly escalated after, I don't know, an hour or two. I basically told her that I wanted to kiss her and to come over here. So she sat in my lap, kind of straddled me, and we started making out for a little bit. And then she hopped off and she goes, well, we got that out of the way. We had a good laugh about that. I was like, well, you got a checklist? And so it was. what was cool is that we were, we were sitting there talking, you know, off and on, you know, throughout the movies and stuff like that. And, you know, she talked to me how she kind of already saw us having sex in my bedroom later, which was, that's kind of nice. And like I said, things just slowly escalated, the physical touching. And then basically we, we didn't actually start having sex till almost 2 o'clock in the morning. And so this whole process started at like 11.30, 11.45 in the morning. So we literally spent the whole day together. So whether you're in a nightclub or you're at a friend's party or you're out with your friends, it's like if you meet somebody and you're having really great chemistry with them and you have a time, hang out, have fun, hook up. I mean, really the whole reason why you and your buddies go out is because all you tend to be, for the most part, tend to be single and you're looking to meet somebody. So if you're out and you meet somebody, why not let it evolve? Why not let that make your date right then and there in the spot? Because the whole purpose of seduction is to get closer and closer to some to a woman until you literally end up inside of her so if you meet somebody in a bar you can grab her hand it's like hey let's go over here and throw some darts let's go over here and do this let's go you know grab a quick bite to eat or whatever and it just naturally evolves now her friends and your friends are kind of out of the way you don't have to worry about getting cock blocked or clam slammed by other people and you can continue to get closer and closer until 11 12 o'clock one o'clock i mean you guys are all over each other at that point it's easy just to go back to your place and obviously conclude things successfully in the bedroom. And so I'll give you a couple other examples. Now I had another example one time. I was, I was sitting down for lunch in this really nice place and I'm in like shorts and t-shirts and, a, and, a, and flip-flops. And this was over, over the summer actually. I was down in, in South Florida. And the, it was like – it was about I don't know, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So it's like the place is packed. So there were no tables to sit. So I ended up sitting at the bar because it was the only place that I could actually sit down and eat lunch. And so I'm surrounded by all these people who are like suits and ties and they're all dressed up, business attire. And, you know, I'm dressed like a beach bum basically. And so, you know, I sort of was chatting with this cute bartender and I just, I, I, I was eating some, a spinach artichoke dip and like one of the chips like slid off the plate onto the floor. And so like right in between me over here was the entrance to the bar. And so I leaned over this way to grab the chip as I was picking up to set it back on the bar, she was watching me. I could tell by the way she was watching me. She's thinking, that dude's going to put that thing in his mouth. And I just said to her, I was like, don't worry. I'm not going to I'm not gonna eat it. And she says, well, yeah, if, if, you, if you'd eaten, I would have busted your balls about it or something like that. She said something funny to mess with me. And I could just tell by the way she talked to me that she had a lot of confidence. It later turned out she was a valedictorian of her class and very smart, graduated with honors, was very healthy and healthy eating, that kind of thing. And so – when when um, I, I put the chip back on and then she kind of turned back around and then so I went to check her out because I really you know I thought she was kind of cute but so when she had her back to me I was checking out her body and I realized wow she's got a really great ass and really nice legs and so she turned back around to me and I go you have a fucking unbelievable body just like that looked her right in the eyes and she went what and her voice got you know kind of nervous and I know she heard what I said but it was like so stunning to her because probably nobody's ever had the balls to say anything like that. And so I said it a little bit louder. You have a fucking unbelievable body just like that. She went, you really think so? 
And she became, and she's like turned, and this girl had a nice tan. She turned like red like a lobster. And so she got a little embarrassed and she turned back around to the cash register, did some things. And a minute or two later when the redness went away, she turned back around with a big old smile on her face. And this is the next thing I said to her. When are you free to meet up for a drink? And she goes, without hesitation, she goes, well, I'm free tomorrow night or my, my day off is Thursday. And I was like, great. How about tomorrow night? And I named a place. And I, she goes, oh, that's my favorite place. I was like, great. It was this really cool place in the water. And so I said, how about 7 o'clock? She's like, great. And I was like, let me get your number. And it's like, and what's your name? I didn't even know her name at this point. So she gives me a piece of paper and I write her name down and, her, and she tells me her number. And then I rip it in half and then I write my name and my number and I slide it over to her. Now, this is real important. What I said to her next was, and this is how you make sure you have a definite date. I said, if something comes up, I will call you. Otherwise, I'll just see you there. Is that cool? And she was like, great. Sounds good. And I was like, all right. You know, I got to get out of here. Give me a hug and I'll see you later. So I gave her a hug and then I left. And I'll give you another example. I was in the gym the other night. And I was, this was probably about a week and a half, two weeks ago. I think it was. I was, I was doing, working on legs. I was doing leg press. And this girl walks by. Beautiful. Just like, wow. Stunningly beautiful, perfect body. Like, just amazing, Gordon. She just looked me right in the eye with confidence and smile. And I was like, hey, how you doing? She's like, I'm doing great. How about you? And I was like, great. And then she continued on wherever it was that she was going. And so when I finished with that set, I walked over to the other side of the gym to get to work on a, a piece of equipment that was over there. And then I get over there and it turns out there's somebody using that machine. So then I'm going to go back to all across the gym to another piece of equipment that w- would do the same exercise. It's just I didn't really like using that machine, but it would work. And so I catch on the corner of my eye, there's this girl, she's just kind of standing there drinking her water bottle, the one that had walked by me and kind of looked at me like with these fuck me eyes. And so I walked up to her, I was like, what are you waiting on? And I think it was what, I said, what are you waiting on? Because she was just kind of standing there looking at everybody. And she's like, oh, I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do next, blah, blah, blah. And I just went, you are absolutely amazing. And I said, when are you free to meet up for dinner? And so we start talking and she's, and and she says, she says, maybe. And so we, you know, I hear that, I'm thinking, oh, fucking maybe. When a woman says maybe to you, it means no. So we, we continued on, and then I asked her again, and she's like, well, you have a business card. I'm like, no, I don't have any business cards on me. And I was like, come with me. And so we walked over to where the trainers, personal trainers were, and I was like, hey, you guys got a piece of paper. So I wrote my number down to her, and I handed it to her. I was like, hey, give me a call. And then I walked away and went on about my workout. And then like I think two nights later, I, I, I was working out. And then I ran into the same girl again. And we were literally – she was standing in the spot where I was, I was going to go and do, and do an exercise with some free weights. And I was like you – know, I remembered her name. I was like, hey, I'm not going to say her name obviously. And I was like, say her name is Samantha. And I was like, hey, Samantha, how are you? And she kind of looked at me for a second and she was almost like – where do I know you from? And I just met her two nights before. And it's like, I knew who she was. So what does that tell you about her level of attraction for me? It's like, eh, really not there. She's really not that in me. She's already like two nights later and she's already kind of forgot who I was. And so she's like, oh, hey, how are you? And so we start talking and we, you know, we had talked for like five, ten minutes. And I didn't bring up anything about you know her calling me or anything like that because she's got my number. If she wants to call me, she'll call me. But the fact that she said maybe when I asked her out, it's like, for dinner, it's like, she's not that into me. And then when she says, you know, when I ask her for her number, she's, she also says, oh, I think it's more appropriate when a girl meets a guy in a gym that she gets his number. So she's either structured, a little bit of a control freak, or she's just not interested. And I'm thinking but the way everything that I've seen from her, she's just not that interested. So we're working out, both of us, and we're, you know, kind of talking and, you know, in between sets and stuff like that. She tells me a little bit more about her. I got to know a little bit better. And then after a few minutes, she, she finishes – she sets her weights down, then she walks around the other side of this mirrored wall, and then I, you know, I, I'm finishing up my sets, and like five minutes, six minutes later, I see her. She's got her jacket on, she's got her purse, and she doesn't come over and say goodbye or anything, and she just leaves. And I know she's probably maybe 20, 30 yards in front of me as we're both walking out the gym, and I don't say anything to her. I, you know, she didn't bother saying goodbye, so it was like, what does that tell you? She's just not that into me, and that's the way it goes sometimes. So you see like there's just two different types of experiences. I'm, one girl I'm trying to set a date with and she's like – she won't set a date and she wants my phone number and then she just kind of acts like I'm a lampshade if you will next time I see her in the gym. And then I got another girl I meet in a public place 
and without hesitation, she gives me her phone number. She makes a date right on the spot. And then the, the other one that, that I hooked up with as well, who it's like literally I invite her to come along with me and it just slowly evolves into a successful seduction. I mean at the end of the day, if a girl really likes you, she'll go out with you. And that's the thing you got to look at. You can't get, get hung up and like, oh, girl's so fucking hot. She's got a great body. She's amazing. She's exactly what I wanted. If the interest isn't mutual, there's not a damn thing that you can do about it. It's just the way it is. So you can't get hung up on those things. So with those stories in mind, I want to get into this guy's email and critique some of the things that he's encountered. Because obviously he's a little discouraged because he hasn't been had the success that he's expecting. So he's kind of a little bit of attached to his results. And this guy, I've done two email um, he's done two email phone sessions or email sessions with me where he's sending an email paid to have me respond to it. Because this guy writes really great questions, I've answered a couple of them in videos for him in the past that I've done. He says, hey coach, I just want to provide an update after the video that you did, stand your ground or get jerked around. And the other one you a answered my other email, which was, is she bored, interested, or turned off? So if you want to go check those out and see what this guy's progress is or what the other things he's talked about, be my guest. He says, there have been a lot, a lot of changes in my life since we last spoke. I've been practicing a lot of your teachings on developing your social skills by going up to girls, saying what I mean, and asking for phone numbers. I feel like it's helping me develop into the person that I want to become and also eliminate my fears. I used to do a lot of online dating and lost my social skills. You never really lose your social skills. You might be get, a, get a little out of practice, but if you get into a fearful state, I mean, it's really just like riding a bike. Repetition is the mother of skill. Excellence is not a singular act. It's a habit. You are what you do repeatedly. He says, I met my ex of two and a half years through online dating, and when I initially met her, she contacted me first, and we started to develop a relationship through texting and email. So here's the interesting thing, and that's why the online dating profile I did, if you Google Corey Wayne, the ultimate online dating profile, I'll also reference this in my book, the second edition of it, that is, is that you'll notice that she reaches out. Now, if a woman's reaching out too, she already has decided you passed her physical attraction test and you're good enough for her. And oh, by the way, the girl in the gym, one of the things that she told me on our conversation was that we were start talking about? I was like, you got, you're in great shape. You got a great body. And she was like, yeah, it's, I'm in my fourth month back. You know, and I was in a long term relationship. I was like, so you got lazy and you got complacent and stopped working out. I was busting her balls a little bit. But she was, I don't know, a year, two year long relationship. So she, her feelings are still going to be a little bit raw. So she might have been standoffish. Who knows? Maybe that girl will end up calling me. You just never know. And that's why, you know, it's like if a girl does that, you're just like, hey, here's my number. And I just went right back to working out and anything of it because when I hear – because I like it when a woman's really interested in me. It makes it really easy and it's a lot more fun to go out with a woman who's really into you and is excited and enthusiastic versus somebody you're like, wow, she's really hot. Now, when I was younger, it didn't really matter. As long as I thought she was hot, in my mind, I'm like, hey, I can I can make her want me more. As long as on a scale of 1 to 10, you're a 5 in her eyes, you have a chance. But if you're like borderline, I would say I was like borderline to probably not have – you know, she's – I'm like a four or a five. If I never hear from her, obviously she wasn't that into me. And I'm a three or four in her eyes. So I had no chance anyways and it really doesn't matter. He says, I understand now that by texting all the time, it kills mystery. However, I used to text at the beginning through online dating to create a relationship. Well, like I talk about with online dating is that you want to move it because if she's reaching out to you, you want to talk on the phone. You don't need to talk more than eight to 10 minutes you create some rapport get her a level of comfort where she realizes you're not a fucking fruit loop if you get her ta doing most of the talking and you know you're asking questions they can simply say hey let's meet up for a drink sometime when are you free to get together because if she's been talking for eight or ten minutes mostly about herself it's pretty simple she's already going to feel comfortable because she's going to feel at that point she's going to feel like she's talking to an old friend and it's going to seem natural it's like sh she's definitely going to want to meet you meet up for a drink because she reached out to you he says, I get this feeling that women won't set dates with you unless they know more about you, but what you teach is kind of the complete opposite. No, that's not the case. If you would have read that article, it's very clear in there what to do. And this problem is you don't know the book well enough and you haven't referenced some of the articles. It's like you're implementing parts of it without really 
knowing it that well. You got to remember, each time you read something or you watch something, you're only going to gain eight to ten percent of the wisdom that's in there. And so, if on a 270-page book, it's like each time you go through it, you're basically memorizing about 27, 28 pages. And if you don't know it that well, you're going to make unnecessary mistakes. You're going to be confused in relationship skills with pickup skills and there is a chron definite chronological order that you must follow, otherwise you're not going to be successful. He says, this year what I've decided to do is cut out television, movies, excessive use of my cell phone. It's, it's a good way to go about it. He says, I now only use my cell phone to make dates. Cutting out television and movies has given me a totally different perspective on life because now I'm not programmed by what I see. Even though I feel like I'm free and not tied down, it feels awkward because I'm not receiving a lot of text messages anymore. Well, you're stepping outside of your comfort zone. He says, what you teach is only to use a cell phone to make dates. And even though I'm able to, able to grab photos from girls, I'll call them a few days later to leave a message and I won't receive a call back on the same day. Well, sometimes women are going to wait two or three days. And my question is to you is why are you not making dates in the spot? Why are you not having instant dates? You're going to be a lot more successful if you do that. And that's why I talk about it in my book. But you're taking the easy approach because it's it's uncomfortable for you to try to set a date in a spot. It's like sounds like you're just trying to get the phone number and haul ass the fuck out of there because it's weird and awkward for you. And that's understandable when you're just learning the practice and stuff. But like I said, I just gave you three really good examples that those are the typical kinds of things that you're going to encounter when you do that. He says, maybe this has to do with being patient to hear from them. Yeah, because if you call, it's just like the, the quote that I read the other day from a woman that posted on one of my YouTube videos. When she tells a guy, I will get back in touch with you or I will call you or she purposely waits and then the guy doesn't, it pisses her off and she's like, that's it. That's enough for her to say, I'm not going out with this guy. Really beautiful women, that is what they do because they have a lot of options. They got a lot of guys throwing their dicks at them and – they're looking for the most confident, the most alpha guys out there. He says, when I met this girl, I was out ice skating one day and I felt tired. So I decided to take a rest on a bench and this girl and I started a conversation. I asked her for her phone number and instead she wanted my email address. Well, if you got time, you can say, hey, I'm going to get out of here in a few minutes if you care to join me for a drink or if you care to join me for dinner. Get in the habit of doing that because you already got some rapport going there. Just like I talked about when I met this other gal at the office. We'd kind of said hello to each other a couple times. But other than that, that was it. And it's easy. She's driving her car to follow me where I'm going to have some lunch or dinner obviously in this case. But like I said, it's not everything I teach is totally set in stone. But it's the process. It's the whole process of seduction, spending time together. So I wasn't really sure that I was that into her. And so I'm figuring, hey, we'll go to lunch. I'm going to lunch anyways. If she wants to join me, great. It's like I could – it's a take or leave it kind of attitude. He says, I thought to myself, email, fuck that. So I said, hey, here's my phone number. So if you want to go for a coffee or something, give me a call. I wouldn't have said that. I would have said, hey, when are you – you, I really like chatting with you. We should meet up for a drink sometime. When are you free to get together? That communicates a lot more confidence because what you're doing here is you're saying, hey, here's my phone number. So if you want – to go for a coffee or something, give me a call. Well, where's the confidence in that? Where is the presupposing, of course, she wants to meet up with you? There's a lot of doubt in your voice in the way that you're going about it. It's not so much what you say. It's how you say it. And you're not saying things with a lot of confidence. Like I said, you're using the phone number instead of making a date right then and there on the spot. And when a woman... When you ask a woman for a phone number and she's like, hey, give me your email instead, it's just like the girl that I encountered in the gym. What does that tell me? She's really not that into you, dude. And so if a girl like that never calls you or never sends you an email, don't take it personally. It just means she's not that into you. If you invite a girl to join you for lunch or in dinner or a drink and she snaps that off or just like the one I was talking about in the bar without any hesitation at all, guess what it means? It means she's interested in you. It's like, Hello? It means you got a chance. He says, this was three weeks ago and just last Friday she gave me a call. Well, obviously she's into you then. That's a good sign. So she waited three whole weeks before she got in touch with you. That's cool. He says, she asked if I remember who she was and sounding confused, I said yes, but I had to give her a call when I got home. 
When I got home, I called her and we talked for a little bit and I asked her when she was free. She told me she didn't have any plans right now, but I told her that I had plans that night and whether day would work for her. She said she had a volunteer commitment on Saturday and that I should call her after 10 to see how she was feeling after volunteering. If you knew my book well enough, you would know how to respond to that. You would have, you would have just said, you know what, we'll get, let, what day do you know you're definitely free so we can make some definite plans? You need to ask it that way. Because here, here she's saying, oh, call me at 10 p.m. If I don't have anything better going on, maybe I'll go out with you. And you're like, okay, I'll do that. I'll call you at 10 o'clock. So the next day, my friends wanted me to go out and I ended up calling her at 3 p.m. to which she didn't pick up. So I left her a message. I told her that my friends wanted to go out and I wanted to see if she wanted to go out on Tuesday at 7 because I didn't want it to be a half-assed effort. I would have never said any of this, dude. You should have made a date on the spot there and that's a missed opportunity. It's your job as a man to be direct and be decisive when you make a date. And you're still being kind of vague and up the and the and just leaving things up in the air. You kind of it's like you're waiting for the woman to be the man and be the one that makes the plans. That's expressing weakness. That is a lack of dominant behavior. That is a lack. You're acting like a beta male. And you wonder why you're struggling because you're acting like a beta male. It's like you had a perfect opportunity to set a date there and then you just fumble the football. Why? Because you probably read my book once or twice and think, hey, I got this shit. I don't need to listen to what fucking Corey says 10, 11 times. I got time to read his book 10, 11 times. And you, you miss a good opportunity and, and now you're all bummed about it. But if you'd have been prepared, it's like Confucius said. Success depends upon prior preparation. Without said preparation, there's sure to be failure. He says, so since it was being Monday, I haven't heard back from her, but I was thinking about giving her another call or text sometime this week. Absolutely not. Why would you do that? It's over pursuing behavior. I just discussed this in a video the last couple of days. Women said it really pissed she said it really pisses her off when she tells a guy she'll call him back or she waits to call a guy back and then he calls her two or three times. That's all it takes to blow it, and you're like barely holding on to your fingernails with this particular girl. He says, I don't believe I did anything wrong. Come on, man. Because I'm not going to sacrifice my happiness to chase someone. In other words, I don't want to admit that I fucked up, Corey. But obviously something ain't working here. Another girl I met in a nightclub on Friday. We started to have a flirty conversation. And I could physically tell she was interested in me because of the way she was acting. I could also tell she wasn't drunk. I told her she was absolutely gorgeous and asked her if she wanted to go for a drink sometime. And she agreed. So I ended up getting her number why didn't you set a date, dude? What, what's wrong with having a drink right then and there? Hanging out, having fun, and hooking up. You felt you, you said it seemed like she was totally into you. It's another missed opportunity. But hey, you're just learning. That's okay. I used to do this stuff too. But the, that's the whole purpose why you writ me is so I can critique your game to help you get better. So I ended up getting her number and then decided to hang out with my friends for the rest of the night. Well, I would have hung out with her if you were having that kind of chemistry because then you could have said, hey, you know, taken her someplace else across the street or done something else or just hung out with her and then maybe later on in the evening invited her back to your place for a glass of champagne because you should always have a bottle of champagne in the fridge and some glass champagne flutes in your freezer. ABP, always be prepared. I called her on Sunday to which I only got her voicemail and left a message asking her when she might be free to get the, a drink together. I haven't ber heard back from her since. You must wait. I get the feeling that because I wasn't around her that night at the nightclub, because I was having fun dancing with myself and my friends, it may have ruined my chances with her. What do you think? Hang out and have fun, hook up. What's wrong with having an instant date right there? Like I said in the quote, the more steps you put in between the two of you getting together for a date or your first date, the higher the likelihood will be that you're not going to be successful. Think about it. You're meeting. You met out. You're having some chemistry. You're having a good time. You're chatting her up. Why not keep that going, dude? Just like I was talking about, you know, when I met this girl last week, and we had a we spent the whole day together, and we spent the whole evening. And she ended up staying at night. We had a fucking wonderful time together. That's how a love story starts. It's beautiful. It's the way it's supposed to be. Why interrupt that? He says it's a little frustrating because I'm not getting dates. I'm not getting late. So sometimes I don't feel as if I'm improving. Well, you made some progress. You made a date, you got a phone number. So good job. Just improve on things that I talked about and you'll be great. 
So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a phone, Skype, or email session. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions. I'll talk to you soon.